We now join the J-Team auditions in progress. Gee, Mr. Chan, I'd give anything to be a member of the J-Team. What skills do you have? I'm a Pokemon trainer. Pokeball, go! <laughs> All right! I captured Jackie Chan! <sighs> So, does this mean I get to make the team? Uh, no. Join the J team by watching Jackie Chan Adventures! Jackie Chan Adventures was an animated show from the early 2000s on the kids WB block, home to many bangers like Animaniacs, Static Shock, and Mucha Lucha, though some of you might have seen the show on Cartoon Network or Jet X. I remember loving this show growing up. I was already a huge fan of his movies. One of the first ones I ever saw was Rush Hour 2, even though I was way too young. When I found out that Jackie Chan was getting his own show and it was going to be animated, I was hyped and it soon became one of the best parts of my Saturday mornings. Out of all of the celebrity led cartoon shows I've come across, this is one of the best ones. Second to probably Class of 3000. Granted, I haven't seen many celeb tunes. I never saw The Adventures of Muhammad Ali, That Hulk Hogan Show, The Mr. T Show, or Pro Stars, and I never really cared for Mike Tyson's Mystery Adventure. So let's find out exactly what makes Jackie Chan Adventures so great, or is it all nostalgia bias? And where's the best place to start? That's right, the pilot. Hey Jackie. Yes. Do you watch your cartoon series? Of course. Of course, definitely. Yes, I have to watch every episode. It's just like my movie. I want to make a movie. Everybody understand what I'm doing, what I'm saying. I want to make sure the cartoon is me. And also the cartoon is good for the kids. Nothing wrong. It's always the good things. The episode starts with Jackie on an archaeological mission looking for the lost treasure of Mad King Ludwig. They soon find the treasure, but before Jackie can warn them about booby traps, this nigga sets one off. Really, nigga? Jackie springs into action, showcasing his quick thinking and athleticism. This is also where we first hear Jackie's iconic catchphrase. Bad day. Bad day, bad day, bad day, bad day, bad day. Jackie manages to make it out with the help of a mysterious shield. From here, we see Jackie being watched by two different mysterious people. Next, we have the theme song. Jackie Chan Adventures might have the best theme song without any lyrics. Like Deadass, this is one of the coolest theme songs I've ever heard. We meet back up with Jackie at the antique shop run by his uncle, one of the best characters in the show. Oh, you did not make coffee this morning. Coffee is the only thing keeping uncle's ancient heart beating. You want dead uncle? Uncle is giving him the rundown for all that he has to do in the shop before casually dropping that his niece Jade is here to stay for a year. This is Jade, your niece. She will live with you for a year, okay? Okay. I have a niece? I didn't know this is how we met Jade. I always assumed that she was there from the start, like she and Jackie already knew each other. This whole situation's kinda wild. Homie had his own life and now is forced to take care of a child that nobody told him about. They know nothing about each other. He doesn't even know she speaks English. Soon after, three guys walk into the shop asking about the shield Jackie found. They give a vague threat and leave the shop causing Jackie to investigate. After parkouring all through town, he gets caught on a bad pipe and falls on their car. Oh. <laughs> what was with that sus ass face? Next, we have our first fight, and it doesn't disappoint. Homie whoops they ass all over the playground. Also, while this is happening, Jade was just there the whole time? apparently, but before Jackie has a chance to process this, he's knocked out by one of the men we saw earlier. Soon after Jackie wakes up, it's here where we get introduced to Captain Black. Apparently he and Jackie go way back. Where have you been? I don't 
don't hear from you for six years. Boom, you're in San Francisco saving my butt. Annoyed at being knocked out, he stumbles upon a secret entrance to Section 13. He explains to Jackie that the reason why he's here is to not only lead the new organization, but to also stop the new crime syndicate, the Dark Hand. From here, we meet up with the leader of the Dark Hand, Valmont, the other man we saw earlier. His goons are in the process of explaining exactly how they got their ass beat by one man. He calls for the muscle of the group, Toru, who's also tired of their shit. We also meet the demon sorcerer Shin Du and his super ninjas. Back at section 13, Captain Black offers Jackie a job to help figure out exactly why the Dark Hand is so interested in the shield. Then out of nowhere, Jade comes through on a moped. Care to explain how our security was penetrated by a child? Knowing that going forward she will do this damn near every episode, it's hilarious to think that they tried to stop it. Soon after, Uncle calls. He discovers that the shield itself isn't important, but rather the incantation on it. But before he could say more, Toru's big back ass shows up and kidnaps him. Oh well blubber back ass nigga. Jackie rushes back to the shop in search of the shield. Once he finds it, he makes his way to the meetup, preparing to go in just for Jade to show up again out of nowhere. Uncle's up there, huh? You speak English? You know I do. So what part of go to your room do you not understand? <laughs> You know what? I get why your parents sent you here. The amount of patience Jackie must have to not send her ass back to Hong Kong. This is your first day and you're running around like it's a damn game. Uncle got kidnapped. There are people after us. He meets Toru and Uncle on the roof of the building. But instead of a trade, he throws the shield, leaving an opening for Jade to grab Uncle to make their escape. Fool! Say sayonara to your uncle! Bitch! <laughs> Before Jackie can make a run for it, the Shadow Con show up, and we have another badass fight. They soon have him cornered on the building, but luckily, Jade and Uncle made it out. So he throws it down to the ground, but it is quickly intercepted by Toru, and they lose the shield. Back on the ground, Jackie is disappointed that they lost the shield. Ow. Uncle reminds him that the shield isn't important, but the talisman inside. Luckily for them, Jade took the talisman without Toru noticing. Uncle explains that there are 11 more talismans, each one marked with a symbol from the Chinese zodiac. Captain Black offers Jackie the job one more time, and with a little help from Jade, he accepts. And the episode ends, setting up the adventure of season 1. That was Jackie Chan Adventures, the pilot. This shit bangs. I remember liking it as a kid, but I don't remember it being this good. One of the things that makes this more than just a cartoon with Jackie Chan's name on it is how it incorporates Jackie Chan as a celebrity, stuntman, and movie star. It feels like Jackie Chan, if that makes sense. It has all of his mannerisms and quirks from the movie. I love how it looks. There's something about the background in this freehand sketch style that I love. I don't know how else to explain it. I never realized how expensive of the animation was. It adds to the charm and the humor. Jackie! A You're evil! You're evil! The character designs can be a little off at times. Their eyes can trail off sometimes, like oh, Bernie Mac, but I got used to it after the first season. The animation really shines in the combat. They got his fighting style down perfectly. Jackie already fights kind of cartoony, but they really captured his creativity. There's always an element of fun to his fights. I mean, I love a good It Man, John Wick type of fight, but there is a talent being able to make a fight engaging, creative, and fun all at the same time. Niggas talk about John Wick killing a man with a pencil. Has he ever whooped ass with a ladder? There are a bunch of different references to his movies throughout the show that I never noticed as a kid, but can now appreciate as an adult.
It's not just his movies either. In season three, we meet a guy named Bartholomew Chang, yes, that's his real name, who is a reference to Mr. Han from the Bruce Lee movie Enter the Dragon. In fact, the whole episode is a parody of the movie. Are you certain you wish to serve me? Of course, Master Chang. Then prove yourself, Sumo. Bury our intruder. Man. You come right out of a comic book. This show is funnier than I expected. Like a dead ass, this had me dying sometimes. Show me my room, Toru. No room here. What do you think? This is a hotel. Only for roaches. Also, I don't remember the show having this many pop culture references. I didn't mind them, but still. Yeah! Must destroy Turbo Troll. Chucky ain't lost. There's also a bit where Toru does a John Wayne impression. Ah, the Duke. Saddle up, Pilgrim. Happy Thanksgiving, Pilgrims! But moments before, Jade talks about her favorite actor, Raphael Capri Sun or some shit, a parody of Leonardo DiCaprio. Hello! Raphael DiCaprio is only the greatest movie star in the history of history. So I guess they just pick and choose whether or not niggas exist in their world. Something else I felt added to the quality of the show was the Q&A segments at the end of every episode. It worked as a dope cameo and added to the show's authenticity. Also, side tangent, growing up in a Christian household, there was a lot of shows I wasn't allowed to watch. Yu-Gi-Oh, The Mummy, Cow and Chicken because of the red guy. Hello! Use a freaky ass nigga! And come to think of it, the theme song may have also played a part. Mama had a chicken! Mama had a cow! Dad was proud! He didn't care how! I couldn't watch Beavis and Butthead, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but Ugly Martians. We are the Martians, the fuck ugly Martians! We are what the fuck? Every cartoon on Fox, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, even though I still did, everything on Toonami, even though I still did, all because in one way or another, these shows were deemed to be demonic. But somehow, I was allowed to watch Jackie Chan Adventures with no problem, a show that is arguably more demonic than the others. God forbid I watch a show about adorable superpowered animals or a children's card game instead of an archaeologist fighting off literal demons with magic and spells. I wasn't allowed to watch Freakazoids, but this gets a pass. Season 1 was a lot of fun. It primarily focused on collecting the talismans while also setting the foundation of the show's format. Symbolized by the 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac, the talismans are powerful magical charms. Each talisman possesses a different magic power. The way you go about using them can be a little ambiguous at times. Like at first, I thought you had to squeeze it. But I guess not all the time. Sometimes you can use it like a battery or pop it into a CD player. Personally, I'm rocking the rooster, horse, and dragon talisman. I'm trying to be the black homelander. We also get to know the characters a little bit more. Jackie and the gang were great, but I loved Velma and the Dark Hand. They are the backbone of this show. I really enjoy their dynamic with the others. Speaking of the Dark Hand, Finn pulls out a gun twice this season. I ain't taking no more lip from a statue. Whoa! This aired on Kids WB. How do you let that slide? Imagine if this was made by four kids. Would have replaced it with like a donut These or some shit. Great. Not too far behind, we get introduced to one of my favorite characters, Hawk Fu. But I'll speak more about him later. I could have swore Toru turned face like way later, like at the end of season two or something. But nah, he does it in season one. Justifiably, I might add. 
Homie gets sent through a window and a building. <laughs> I would have left they ass too. I knew he eventually joined their side, but I didn't know he became Uncle's apprentice. So that was pretty cool. We also get introduced to Shindu arguably the main villain of the whole series. He's the reason the talismans even exist, and he needs them to be able to escape his statue prison. He doesn't really do much until the tail end, which trickles into season 2, but yeah, overall, season 1 was pretty good. Season 2 was also good. It picks up where season 1 leaves off, focusing on Shin Du getting revenge. One of my favorite episodes from season 2 was the prison break episode. Jackie has to go undercover as a prisoner, and look what they did. Say, ah. <sighs> Jackie Chan, meet Chance Jackson, master criminal. Chance Jackson? <laughs> that is Vincent Adult Man level of stupid. Went to the stock market today. I did a business. Season 2 has a lot of core memories for me. Jackie getting possessed by Shen Du, this girl turning into a monster, and with Jackie and Jay switch bodies. You wouldn't hit a little girl. <gasps> When in Jade, do like Jade. The Dark Hand are great as always. They give Captain Black a bit more character. They give him some lines to play with. I'll take the guy in the ninja suit. Really, nigga? In addition to Shen Du getting revenge on Jackie Chan, we also get introduced to his family, the Demon Sorcerers. Po Kong was ugly as shit. Genuinely one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. And I've seen Eliza Thornberry. She only shows up for about a minute or two and barely does anything. Xiao Fung was pretty cool. He did a lot more than his sister, and he was one of the funnier demons. Chong Soon was one of my favorites. He shares the same voice actor as Captain Black, Clancy Brown, the GOAT. He had one of the better powers and didn't go down easy like some of the others. So Lan was kind of cool, and he controlled gravity. I hated his freaky tongue thing though. Can you eat pussy like that? He's also played by Glenn Shadix, the same voice as the brain from Teen Titans. I have captured the king. Your pawns cannot save you. And for you, things look very grave. Dai Guei had a badass design. My favorite second to Shen Du. Shi Wu was pretty cool. Homie looked like a glass gore. He was one of the more entertaining demons. Bai Za had a pretty cool design. I think it's implied that she was the ruler of Atlantis. Compared to the other demons, she definitely does the most. Overall, I enjoyed this whole arc. However, I have some beef with season 2. First off, it's 39 episodes long. 39! Why? Shit if I know. On paper, that's fine. More Jackie Chan adventures? Yeah, I'm down for that. But midway through, it slows down with a bunch of filler, one-note villains and goofy-ass stories. There were episodes about a chupacabra, an origami man, this guy, this other guy, a jewel thief. Oh, a call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! but not for me. Oh! Valmont briefly comes back, but then we go back to evil puppets and some evil gloves. Thank you. Speaking of gloves, do y'all remember the musical about Michael Jackson's glove? What does spilling you see me, mother? My point is, there was a bunch of bull until we got to Wong, and the overall quality picks up. But with that said, Season 2 was still very enjoyable. Season 3 focuses on the now destroyed talismans and the magic being cast into their respective animals. Another core memory I have with this show is the rooster and pig dual wielding talismans. <laughs> This is one of the best things I've ever seen. Dolong Wong returns as the main villain with the Dark Hand, who he turns into his Dark Chi warrior slaves. I have a faint memory of this happening, but I thought they were new characters instead of just the Dark Hand to transform. Valmont is barely in this season, which is a bummer. Hak Fu is still around, thank god. He also gets turned into a Dark Chi warrior, but he has the best design. Homie look like a demon Super Saiyan 4. Uncle is way more proactive this season, which is always great. I'd argue that season 3 is most about him. Whoa, Uncle, you're supposed to keep getting more awesome. Must keep up with forces of darkness. Room service? Yes. Please send up one vial of eel saliva, three jars of powdered duck feet and a pair of moose antlers. These are all the things you'd find in a McRib.
I'm still gonna eat it. Big bag, big bag. He and Wong got some real old man beef. Their rivalry is one of the best things about this season. You cannot defeat me, old man. Ooh, who are you calling old, you bag of bones? Ha, ha. You have learned the Yen War fire magic. Substituting eel saliva with mayonnaise. Season three ends the Shindu arc, and it does it beautifully. Like dead ass, this is one of the best episodes in the whole series. Shindu returns to reclaim his talismans and to get revenge on Jackie and the gang. They treat this like a huge deal. Everyone we met comes back to lend a hand in defeating Shindu. This was their endgame. My only critique of this season is that it is essentially just another talisman adventure like in season 1. Which is fine, like I still had a good time, but since it's season 3, I was expecting something new. Season 4 is where the show takes a turn for me. We get a new villain, Terracudo, the king of the Shadow Khan. Terracudo was foreshadowed all the way back in season 2 in the tattoo episode. If season 3 belonged to Uncle, then season 4 belongs to Toru. I love that they kept this up for his character. He's come a long way from being just Uncle's apprentice. This season is a bit sillier than the others. Though I still enjoyed it for the most part, some moments were still testing my patience. Come on T, help me out here. I really need a potty break. Insolent slut! Instead of collecting talismans again, they're collecting masks of Terracudo's generals which is basically the same thing, but it feels fresh enough. Each mask can summon their own Shadow Khan. Some of them were cool, like the Samurai and the Sumo, but others were just stupid, like Crab Shadow Khan and Mini Shadow Khan. I kind of wish the mask worked in a Loki mask kind of way, where the wearer takes on the personality and look of the owner. That could have been fun. I enjoyed Toru taking lead, being an asset to finding the mask and creating his own spells. Terracudo was cool. I liked his design. His physical form looked like an incineroar. His banter with the dark hand is great. He's definitely one of the funnier villains. We find out that every time Shindu and Dolong Wong would call upon the Shadow Khan, they were pulling from the power of Terracudo and his generals. I thought this was a good way to tell us just how strong he is compared to the others. It was from this mask that Chengdu drew the power to control his Shadow Khan army, and through which Daolon Wong's magic channeled that very same power. Why don't you see how it fits? Speaking of that, they referenced the tattoo episode in season 2 where Jade draws a symbol on her leg which slowly turns her into the queen of the Shadow Khan. It was one of the first things Terracudo says to Jade. Ah, the former queen of the Shadow returning to the forces of darkness. They played it up like it was going to be a main plot point, but no, they did nothing with it. Something that could have been really cool was dropped for the same old shit. But yeah, season 4 was kind of a letdown, and it's starting to feel a little repetitive. Let's see if season 5 was any better. Disappointment in the game of life! It wasn't good. Season 5 focuses on Drago, Shindu's son, plotting his revenge on Jade and Jackie. Yeah, I didn't like season 5. One of the biggest reasons is because it feels stagnant. It's a simple gimmick that requires some change or variation, and I think season 5 was their limit. I felt like I've seen it all before. Even the stuff they're collecting is getting boring. You expect me to care about a fan and a flower with some chi in it from demons we've already seen? Nigga, get out my face. Drago doesn't help much either. I couldn't buy into him being somewhat important. Even his own team and dad turned on him. And speaking of that, it was dumb as hell to release Shindu. You have the whole world at stake and you release the demon that could give less of a fuck about it. And this whole back and forth he has with his dad just makes him sound even more like a bitch. Never let me have what I want! I told you not to play with your father's world! He's played by Michael Rosenbaum, who's best known for The Flash, which might be the best thing about him. The highlight of the season was probably the finale. I thought it was nice that the Dark Hand came to help. Jackie and Drago had a pretty decent fight, and I liked the fact that it was Toru and Uncle to give the final blow. It wasn't as good as the Season 3 finale, but this was fine. But yeah, overall, Season 5's probably my least favorite. It's not as fun or funny as the other seasons. It's not as exciting or engaging, it's just... Meh. With that said, I still enjoyed the show as a whole, even if I wish the season ended on a higher note. Now, 
back to Jackie Chan Adventures on Kinex. Hey Jackie, what's your favorite kind of music? I like rap song because it makes me like a when I'm training, I like this kind of music. What's up, babe? Jackie Chan, played by James Tsai. Jackie was great. He's the typical good-hearted main character. They made a point to never make him the fastest or strongest guy in the room. And though he's skilled in martial arts, his true skill is in his quick wit and creativity, making the best out of a bad situation. Jackie has damn near fought everywhere. Underwater, in a windstorm, a stadium, on top of a gondola. They even had a space fight. With that said, Jackie is incredibly durable. Homie just won't die. I know Jackie is basically just an archaeologist, but it goes without saying, he's done more for Section 13 than Captain Black ever has. Him and Jay. Speaking of that, something I appreciated coming back to the show was his relationship with Jay. Now, objectively, Jackie is a bad guardian. Jay should have been taken away. The fact that no one has called CPS is crazy. She would have been safer in Hong Kong. Remember when she got sucked into the demon portal or all the time she's been kidnapped? But you know what? She never died. He always prioritized her safety, even later on when she becomes more capable. Some of my favorite moments is when he allows her to take over. I really like this bit from the future episode. Thank you for saving our uh, lives. Be careful. And I just wanted you to know, I am proud of who you turned out to be. I owe who I turned out to be to one person, Uncle Jackie. Hmm? You. Duh. Jade Chan, played by Stacy Chan. Jade is the heart and soul of this show. I'd argue she's just, if not more, of a main character than Jackie. I didn't really care for Jade growing up, but upon rewatch, she quickly became one of my favorite characters. Jade is always stressing this nigga out. Somehow, Jade always finds a way to show up in the most unexpected times. She's like six, but can randomly show up in Mexico over a thousand miles away. The whole gimmick that every time Jackie says stay, Jade does the opposite was cute for like two seasons but once she started putting in work i'm kind of on jade's side first off if she didn't listen to you the first hundred times why the hell would she listen to you at all like just stop bro you're wasting your breath they even mention it themselves and i love that uncle is the one to call it out jade never does nothing I know, but I feel I have to say it. And second, she's proven herself numerous times. Yeah, she gets in the way a lot, but she always comes in clutch. She's made her own potions. She's broken into section 13 countless times. She's beaten niggas twice her size. She's absorbed all the powers of the talismans and didn't die. In all her victories and success, I'm glad they kept her a kid. Like she still has interests that a child would have. She's still just as impatient and impulsive as any other child. Like the time she turned herself into a monkey, or the time she cloned herself. Tell him where to find me. Can I come, Jackie? They're getting on my nerves. That says a lot about you, doesn't it? There's an episode where Jackie is trying to get a talisman back, while Jade wants to save an endangered turtle. Aesop's gonna be that creepy guy's dindin if we don't do something. We will do something after I get the talisman. I see her point, but asking Jackie to pick between a terrorist organization getting possession of a magical talisman that could destroy the world or saving a turtle? Yeah, nah, that turtle gone. Also, this turtle's name is Aesop, which I think is hilarious. The guy that was trying to eat him, I think it's supposed to be a parody of Hannibal Lecter. To die for. Within their relationship, you start to see Jackie's influence on her. You can kind of see it in her fighting, but I first noticed it when they started sharing similar reactions. To see them hold her. But their relationship isn't completely one-sided. It goes both ways. There are many moments where Jade is the one to encourage Jackie. I do not belong with these heroes. The ox made me strong. Without it, I'm- Hello? The talismans never made Jackie Chan a hero. You didn't even like to use them. Courage, brains, and heart are your secret weapons. And you've already got those. But yeah, Jade was fun and low-key made the show for me. Uncle, played by Sav Shimono. Uncle is great. He's just as funny as I remember. Homie always gotta let a nigga know one more thing. One more thing! One more thing! One more thing! 
One more thing! One more thing! One more thing! I'm glad he was more than just a comic relief. He's also an expert on magic, potions, and spells. He's the backbone of the team, but he's still hella funny though. What have you done to my tail, sly uncle? Ancient proverb! None of your beeswax! <laughs> you want uncle to help defeat the ultimate evil? Yes? The Nako needs his rest! Uncle is the magic man. He knows just about everything regarding good magic. And whatever he doesn't know, he finds through research. Through him is where we get most of the show's lore and history regarding magic and demons. But he's not just skilled in magic, he's also good with the hands. But yeah, overall, Uncle was a fun character. Toru, played by Noah Nielsen. Toru was the character I remember the least about. I recognized him from the show. I knew he was a villain turned good, and that was about it. I think I prefer face Toru over heel Toru. Toru as a face was more interesting. They gave him a lot more to do. But heel Toru was kind of a snob. He always looked like he was tired of everybody's shit. Once on the J team, and slowly through the season, we see him get better and better. In the Terracudo arc, he was the main one doing the research, creating spells, and translating texts. I still can't say he's a favorite, but I was pleasantly surprised by how much he did for the show. Everyone else is fine. Viper and El Toro were cool. Captain Black was alright. Pretty useless in my opinion. I mean, how many times has Section 13 been attacked? I feel that they were trying to make him goofier over the show's run, but it never really worked for me. Valmont and the Dark Hand were great. Finn, Chow, and Ratso had great chemistry with everyone, really. Yeah, about that. Uh, we appreciate you busting us out and all, terracudo son. but the truth is we're kind of burnt out on the whole henchman for hire thing. Valmont was a favorite. I loved his pompous, arrogant, aristocratic attitude. Just like old times, eh, Toru? <laughs> I recommend you watch your back, Chan. Toru turned coat on me, you remember? You forced me to fight a demon. Oh yes, that's completely different from what Chan has you doing. But as the seasons went on, Velmont appeared less and less. So much so that his original voice actor got tired of waiting, so they had to hire a new one. Shame Captain Black won't be visiting today. I understand he had a doctor's appointment. <laughs> I may be broke, but I still have my resources. And I've caught wind of your little quest. He becomes virtually irrelevant by the end of the show, but still, I enjoyed him for the most part. Boom -shaka -laka -laka, boom -shaka -laka -laka. Honestly, all the villains were pretty good except for Drago, but none of them could come close to my nigga Hawk Fu, played by John DiMaggio and Jim Cummings, respectively. The dog for immortality? There is not a man alive who can vanquish me. Take your leave or feel the burn. I fucking love this guy. He was one of the best parts of the show for me. I mean, look at him. Homie looks straight out of DBZ. Homie could be in Sparking Zero and fit right in. He'd be a rushdown character screaming out every single attack. He's one of my favorite characters. He's in a lot of the best episodes. <laughs> I don't know what more I can say. It's Hawk Fu. Black Tiger crushes Jan. Jackie Chan Adventures will continue on Cartoon Network. Toonami now continues with Jackie Chan Adventures right here on Kids WB. Hey Jackie, what inspired you to make this TV show? When I was young, I always liked cartoon. I really hope someday I want to be a cartoon character. Cartoon can do all kinds of things I cannot do in my real life. After so many, so many, so many years later, the people, the children, still can remember me. Today, my dream come true. I love cartoon. Despite being a celebrity-led cartoon, it proved that it was much more than that. It's funny, has a great cast of characters, some of the smoothest animations I've ever seen, and was part of one of the best channel blocks ever. On July 8th, 2005, Season 5 would be the official end of the show. 
To which, yeah, good call. I don't think they could have done another season, at least with the format they've been using. Jackie Chan Adventures was better than I remember. Even with the bloated season two and underwhelming season five, it still holds up to me. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's available on Apple TV and Amazon Prime. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs>